and they say invisible. Hi, hello. How are people doing? It's me and Chumpy and we got Capellius hiding out here somewhere as well. How are people doing? Hi, Sliced Bread, howdy doodly. How are you? It is time to continue painting this nightmare stuff. And, uh, yeah. The hide and seek box. Right, that's the name of the box we're painting. I'm notoriously bad at remembering the names of the boxes of the miniatures. The first models that Kim painted ever, not just in Malfa, but ever. That's really cool. That's a nostalgia, nostalgic stuff right there. Oh, the seagull puns. I don't remember any of them. <laughs> it's nice to hear you're better. Um, whew. It's pretty hot here right now. So I'm just going to catch my breath. Uh, what we are going to do now is we are going to paint the horns of Chompy and the little uh, head spikes and teeth. And then we're going to paint his eyes. And the one I want to do is also, uh, I want to, well, we got to paint the loincloth and the chains and the tongues. That's a lot of details, um, more than I remembered. But I um, also want to do a little bit of a glow effect from this direction, like a bit of um, magenta glow from here. And uh, I mean, I think Spyrodyne wanted magenta, so we're going to honor that. But the eyes, I'm going to do orange, is my thinking. I bet the guy who invented the AC was pretty hot. Oh, the jokes. The jokes are going hot. So now that one doesn't work. I think I'm too warm to make good jokes right now. Mm. Okay, so let's open up the palette. Refill it with a little bit of water because it's already gotten a little bit dry again. I think Haunted complained about that. Uh, <laughs> it gets dry quickly. And there we go. So. Yeah, puns make me happy too. Very good. So what we're doing with this miniature, or trying to do, is to uh, paint it in cold nightmarish, and I dropped the model, nightmarish colors. And then we'll contrast that with a few spot colors of warmer paint. I'm going to start off by mm, blocking in some, where did that brush go? Right. Um, some highlights or sort of maybe more like mid-tone in these horns. And Oh. 
Do we know who did invent the AC? So I'm gonna paint lines like this and then I want the horns to be like we're gonna paint lines in this color uh, which is steel agent drab. The base coat is rhinoxide. And we're going to paint them in steel agent drab like this. It doesn't have to be super tidy, but we're going to try and make it somewhat tidy. And I'm going to go back in with a lighter color and make smaller highlights. Also, we'll probably uh, like tint the lower or upper, the uh, outer part of the horns. Um, a little dark. We'll work on that towards the end, thinking. Right now, I'm not worrying about the tone, tonal shift. Just painting lines. And I noticed, like, I, uh, this part of the miniature, I, I barely touched around the spine for some reason. So we need to highlight that as well, like around the spikes. And we could, could do the spikes in the same brownish color. But I think I think we're gonna do them gray. So now I just got distracted and jumped onto this thing. And we'll return to the horns quite soon. I'm using rust gray for highlighting here and well I also mix in a little bit of off white too further highlight Imagine a lot of people will be out in the sun right now, depending on the weather. Um, but we shall be bravely continuing our paint job inside. And that is not too bad either. Ironically, it's kind of peaceful painting nightmares. 
somehow. At least this one. There, so that's gotten a little bit more paint. I'm gonna continue working on our cocky lines. I wouldn't say Graveyard Earth, but that's an old Citadel paint name. It's not called Steel Legion Rab, but it's pretty much the same thing. Just a nice cocky paint. Sort of. Jumpy's got so many eyes. Can get a really good look at his food with these eyes looking towards the chompiest mouth. Is this the only chompy miniature without a mouth on the tummy? Without a tummy mouth? Maybe. Actually, I think so. There are a few patches of dark blue in the horns here. So I didn't cover them entirely with uh, Rhinox Hide, which I almost called Scorched Brown. But I think we're going to treat that as like a happy accident. Go, just gonna fix one thing a little quick.
And this side of the worm. The teeth, I kind of think I want, um, I guess these could be called tusks, but I think I want them, uh, I don't want them to be, to have as much brown on them. Sure, throwing on more cocky paint there. Got a lot of teeth, Chompy. Gonna tidy this up a little bit here. A little floppy in a pretty evident place.
And we gotta pick out those upper teeth. Oh, they're beautiful, aren't they? Paint the tongue purple. Seems like a good color for a tongue. Maybe even wash a little purple in between this um, rows of teeth. So I'm going to continue this little quest of horn and bone painting and um, continue highlighting with Carrick Stone. And uh, 
paint little lines like this. Well, that works better if I keep the miniature in the camera and uh, draw the brush from the base towards the top, creating a little uh, jagged highlights where you got a little um, roughly a little brown triangle showing. Piercing this uh, brighter cocky. And now we'll go over it's too thick. Oopsie. Bring out some more Carrick Stone on the palette. A little trouble focusing there, but I think I'm managing. Maybe the eight. Mm. 
picking out the eyelids for the eyes on Chompy's horns, which is a strange sentence to say, really. But this guy has eyes on his horns. And that's great. I later want to pick out the horns in red, then orange, then yellow. With this highlighting of teeth, we're actually covering most of the paint. Um, just leaving a tiny bit of that darker cocky. A lot of dramatic screaming from outdoors. Uh, I think that's kids playing and not getting killed by each other. I think I, I hope I'd be able to tell the difference. But they do sound a little dramatic at times. At a certain age, it's so hard to tell. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it has yet to happen um, that I have, um, like, missed out on helping someone. <laughs> uh, due to that. But sometimes they do sound like they're getting murdered or something. I mean, they might be playing that, so it's hard to tell. <laughs> I think my cat's chasing a fly or something. I heard strange noises in the apartment. Um, I'm going to mix in a little bit of of white or a lot. We'll see.
so I had this thing where like a dropper bow, um, like it, it just keeps, hi Brush Warrior, how are you doing? It just keeps like popping up a tiny bit more paint and then you rub it off on the wet plant and it does it again, you rub it off, it does it again. And kept doing that, and uh, yeah, so I got a lot of white paint on my uh, palette now. Hi, Brush Warrior, how are you doing? What are you up to? Still alive, that's, that's nice to hear. So am I. Uh, I think. I'm trying to highlight these ridged horns. And there we go. Cat, take it easy. Cats on the rampage. It's my cat's birthday today, actually. She she turns seven today. This mall is so nice. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It it is missing uh, a tummy mouth, but otherwise, it's I I love it. I have the two older Chompies as well, the small one and from first edition and the uh, Nightmare edition, which was, I don't know, I think maybe the first Nightmare edition model might be incorrect, but I was so intimidated when I got it, like, like I still haven't painted it, but sometime. Maybe after painting this one, I'll have the courage to paint the somewhat similar Nightmare version. Translucent one. Nice. That's cool. This is actually pink underneath all this paint. Uh, the uh, Day Glow pink. But I actually, I decided to just paint them normally. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy with uh, my Kirai crew that is translucent showing like that. Hmm, that's cool. It's a cool way to do it. Hi, Zetkin. Just suddenly felt fur against my my leg. Um, A werewolf? Hi, Mad Mac. Yeah, there's actually a really dapper werewolf. Uh, 
in a hat. Uh, I can bring it. I can show it to you. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of Marcus's friends, uh, Ferdinand Vogel and the Beast Within. Uh, so this is. Uh, The Beast Within. So, Wolfie version. Thank you. Yeah, it's a really cool sculpt. Uh, I had a lot of fun painting it. Uh, sorry, a little shaky there. Oh, and uh, Kim just announced that the all those weekly uh, the heavy metal painting contest winners have been announced. Uh, vampire ish units that that'd be the Nephilim. Uh, here's a uh, human form werewolf guy. He's a lawyer. Werewolves, not swearwolves. Twilight vampires? Uh, no, not really. Vampires in suits. Um, no, there aren't. Plenty of suits, though. I, I, I kind of think vampires would overlap a little too much with the Nephilim. I don't know. Just my opinion, though. It's a funny thing. I, like, Warhammer never really used to have werewolves. Guess Malifaux might not have vampires. Um, I know there are the skin wolves, the unit in Warhammer that was least from Forge World, but maybe there was a super old werewolf sometime in Warhammer. I don't know. And yes, werewolves, not so werewolves. Remember. But like, if you look at uh, Castore, unsure of uh, pronunciation, but Castore of the Nephilim, he's very vampiric, in my opinion. Like in the monstrous vampiric way, of course, but. Very much like 
you Diablo's Lilith? Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, the werewolf, uh, Ferdinand Vogel slash uh, the Beast Within is actually pretty fun to play because you can swap back and forth between turns. And they, so it goes from uh, a support character to a beater. That's pretty fun. Goes with Marcus's theme of being adaptive. Yeah, it's really fun. So you have two stat cards, and at the beginning of his activation, you can discard a card and uh, swap and heal. So you just place the, the other model in base to base and remove the first one. And you get the same amount of wounds plus, like, you, you, he heals too, I think. I think I just spat a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> Ew. You know, when you, you, you speak and you accidentally just, like, that happened. But on air, ugh, horrible. Okay, so now with Off-White, I'm trying to do, like, this is a little, uh, this is a little bit um, messy, how I painted it, but like, I think it's going to look good either way, and maybe we can, maybe we can, um, um, do some tidy ups later. I'm going to have to look at those winners later. Uh, but sounds like there are some really cool ones. I have to look at that after a stream. Hi, Zetkin. My little girl turned seven today. Such a big girl. She got some extra fancy food and uh, has been chasing a fly around, I think. Uh, Mad Max says, wow, I like that. Maybe time to dust off the Malifaux stuff. It would be a lot of fun. Um, I'm crazy busy this month, but I wouldn't mind playing. Uh, I can find the time sometime, maybe next month or something. Uh, if you feel like it. Um, otherwise, there are, of course, other people who play too. I'm having a lot of fun with Malifaux. Uh, I'm saying that on a Malifaux stream, but I haven't gotten to play as much this year as you sh I, I used to. But I think I'm going to get to play more um, after the summer. Why have other people who aren't going to have the best? Oh, that's flattering. <laughs> uh, like th this month is crazy but I if you feel like playing a game or chatting about it I think I have a I have some time in July 
for, for sure. So, uh, Spiderman says, I don't know what to paint next. Paint Chompy. Wait, you already painted Chompy. I think. Yeah, you did. Translucent one. We were speaking of that. Uh, I haven't played in ages. Very sad. As I kind of stopped buying, I almost complete my Arcanist. You almost got everything. That's a lot of miniatures. So, uh, why aren't you playing? Was it that there are not a lot of people in your area? I know someone said that, but sometimes they get confused. Where Marcus and Rasp left, I think. Marcus is the best. Woo! He's my favorite. August. Sounds good. Oh, you're going going up north. Nice. Let's meet up in August then. Cool. Mad Mike is a great guy, great gamer, great painter. Mostly playing Infinity right now, but Mad Mike uh, played a, well, I want to say played a huge part in building the Gothenburg scene. I think pretty much single-handedly built the Gothenburg scene in uh, first edition. That was way back. Mad Max says, what is Marcus Alpha in the survival of the fittest? It is the same Marcus the Master. Yeah, it's the same guy, but basically there are two stat cards per master right now. So when you declare a faction and then you declare a master and then we build our crews and I don't know which Marcus you're gonna pick. It's going to be Marcus or Marcus Alpha, and they're good in different ways. Like, Marcus is more about uh, telling his... I mean, he can fight, but he's a lot about supporting his crew, handing out upgrades faster to mutate them and uh, give them movement and uh, buffs and stuff. And whilst Marcus Alpha, he is, he also does via mutations, but he's more brawly and uh, mm, like he, he's not as, he, he's like a bit, uh, more more on the brawly side still with some support but he, his support is much more limited um, so it's two ways to play the same monster um, and uh, every monster has that now so it gives them more flexibility Strangely, it's been difficult to get a hold of the survival of the fittest box in Sweden. Don't know why. Maybe it's not as good at surviving in the northern hemisphere. No, I don't know. 
The more straightforward beat face. Yeah. Yeah, Marcus Alpha is a little bit more like he's still a little bit tricky. Because you swap upgrades around and like they get buffs if they stay somewhat close together to each other, and then you can kind of cycle mutations in a strange way, which is really fun. It's a bit of a puzzle, but he he is he's more he's a little more straightforward. Like he can leap and he can beat face, uh, and he he's a is a better fighter. Mei Feng is really cool. I always liked her. Or I were I was a little bit disappointed in her rules in second edition. But I think she's more fun again now. I mean, she was over the top crazy in first edition. And then she was toned back down a lot in second. She ended up not being played a lot. Mostly strange. She was mostly just good as a counter as, as, a, as, as a counter against Shooty Cruz. I think her design is better at this edition. Do you like Mei Feng? <laughs> My cat replied, oh, eh. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it means something. I'm sure. Not sure what it means, but I'm sure it means something. And Mad Mac, there's a crazy amount of characters right now of monsters. Um, it's a little crazy. My fang has claws and pouncing on things. She is one with the cats. Oh, fair. Yeah, that game probably likes Mei Fang. Uh, what was it when I played like four for each faction and the goblins was not a own faction yet? Yeah. 
Yeah, because like in first edition, for outcasts, you had Leviticus, Victorious, and Hamelin. And then the, with an expansion, you got Hamelin, right? Victorious. Oh, uh, Von Schill, yeah. His first day. He was a he was a henchman, right? Yes. So the masters in the first book were Summer Thief Jones, Victorious, and uh, Leviticus, and then the expansion you got Hamelin. And you got an expansion with henchmen that gave you Ophelia and Von Schill. Yes. Now there are nine monsters per faction, and there are eight factions. <laughs> it's a little crazy. Some monsters are in uh, several factions, though. Like there are a couple, there are a few monsters that are uh, dual faction monsters. Like for instance, Jack Daw is resurrectionist and outcast master. So you can play him in both. Yeah, it's a lot. Marcus is actually a Neverborn and Arcanist monster nowadays. So he made a pact with a certain queen called Ne. Um, oh, I said Nakima. <laughs> Titania. So a bunch of 10 Thunders and Marcus Metal Starbucks. Nice. Oh, Marcus is amazing. I love him. If there is a beeping, that's my dryer everything having finished. It's got a really strange uh, user interface where it's really not very obvious if you turn on or off the sound. Like, you, you, you got <laughs> a button with like a sound, like a speaker icon, and it's got, it's crossed out. But then when it glows, that kind of signifies, signals to me that it's sound off activated. <laughs> it's really strange. If you got, if you can mute something, you should probably have it glow in a like a positive color when the sound is on. Like, you get what I'm saying? Basically, it says sound off on. Or or does it? I can never remember. It's really stupid. I don't know if I'm explaining it very well, but it's really, re really strange. Oh, the Victorious have their super form again. Basically, you can play the Victorious. Uh, like, they're, uh, like, Marcus has two different models. Uh, one of the Victoria Master variants is when they're on the same base. I haven't seen it played though, so I'm not sure if people think they're not very good. I don't think I think Victorious are a little out of fashion. But there there are so many monsters that not everything will 
be played a lot, at least not in your area. Uh, Leviticus is uh, still really scary. I don't remember if he was nerfed in first edition or not, but he's been he's been nerfed every edition since at least. There's this strange um, coincidence of like the Dreamers crew always turning out really nasty, and Colette and Leviticus like they they always turn out really nasty and they have to be adjusted. <laughs> it's a little fascinating. Leviticus can certainly just delete stuff. Um, he's scary. He... You say that it got hit hard in second edition, but it ended up being a very dominant force. Uh, like peop I think people had a knee jerk reaction and then it turned out Leviticus was one of the best monsters in second edition. And then later he was nerfed. Things were toned down quite a lot in second edition though. So I think it felt like stuff got super bad sometimes. But relatively speaking, it was really good. So I don't yeah. So he's 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 been amazing in every edition so far and he's always got gotten hit with a nerf bat. Unless I'm mistaken and he was never nerfed in first edition. I don't remember actually. Still very good after the, the North, though. It's just not necessarily always the best pick, which is pretty good, probably. <laughs> it was a bit nuts. First edition had a lot of fun stuff going on, but it was also wildly unbalanced. It was conceptually an amazing game and I had a lot of fun with it, but... I think when second edition dropped, it was a little jarring that uh, we only got half our heroes at the same time. Although the rest were in beta, I, I think it still left an impression somehow. And um, like the stuff that came out first was probably just felt a little too simplified first, but then the addition really grew and got better, I think. The last Swedish Nationals was won by an outcast player. Uh, Erik Liefbom. And he played Leviticus and Von Schill, I think.
Tracy beat Maya Hoffman with Leviticus. And the latest, late, blah, latest, latest little tournament I held uh, was won by Jakob Christensen and uh, my main sparring partner. <laughs> for uh, uh, for Malifo, and he played Leviticus and Jack Daw and Honshell. So outcasts are are strong. Leviticus actually has a version where you get him on a horse now. Like in his avatar. You can bring in all the four horsemen. It can be kind of scary. Probably not always the best choice in some missions, but can be really scary. My opinion. So you can bring, it's maybe not always the best idea to bring four riders, but two or three is really strong. Um, Okay, so I think maybe it's time to paint Chompy's eyes. Just gonna refuel a little bit with some coke. <laughs> and then I'm going to pick out all these eyes with Mephiston Red. And shall we try and count the eyes? This chompy doesn't want to miss anything. I I can see now that there are a few touch-ups I need to make, but that's not going to be fun watching on camera. So, okay, so there are one, two, three, four, oops, tutorial for the Vogel fur. Uh, it's up on YouTube somewhere, or somewhere, it's, it, it's on a weird channel, so like the streams. Where I painted it uh, on YouTube. I actually don't quite remember how I did it, but I think I I think I actually dry brushed. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think it's got like eighteen eyes or something. 
Uh, I think I dry brushed dark gray, then medium gray, then light gray. And then I think I washed everything. Uh, black and dark brown. And then uh did some layered highlights of just like of grays and then i think i tinted some parts of his fur with some sepia i'm actually not i i think his fur could have been thank you kim I think his fur could have been painted a little bit better. Um, I think it's maybe the weaker part of that paint job, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's mostly that I know where the mistakes are or the rough parts. For, mm, I like to dry brush and wash, and then I layer on some highlights on areas I think are the most important. So, like individual, like they're not individual hairs, but kind of gives the impression of that. Like you paint little clumps of, of hair. Okay, I think I got all the eyes. I'm now going to get some Wild Rider Red. And uh, pick them out again and try and just like pick out a little circle in the middle of the ice, but not small and not so small. Like, I want to cover most of the red. I'm not going, I'm going to go for orange eyes. And I'm off camera. Oops, sorry. So I was thinking of doing glowing eyes. Should we do that? Always glowy. Okay. Always glowy. Um, we do Fire Dragon Bright. Maybe I should have just gone straight to Fire Dragon Bright. I'm not sure. 
Uh, like I don't really have enough brush control to like make it so like these eyes have good translations between lots of different <laughs> orange paint, but eh, trying, doing our best. And we're building it up and like this way, I guess we get it more and more intense, more and more saturated. I like this uh, orange against those cold colors. I find that if I, when I sit, when I'm streaming, it's difficult not to make stupid voices after a while. Um, maybe because you you don't like. I think I think it's because I'm talking out into silence and it just it's a little strange subconsciously like i have you lovely weirdos to speak to so i'm not lonely it's just i think maybe there's something was sitting here and uh having a cat looking at you all judgmental being like why are you talking into the air there is no one there um Always glowy. So I wonder if Spyridon fi figured out what to, uh, to paint next. I never even said hey, hi to Defective Dice. I'm so sorry. I was so focused on what you were saying. I hope you're good. I'm sorry, Defective Dice. I feel rude. I feel rude. I was in the zone. I was in some sort of zone, all right? Yeah. So how are you doing, defective dice? And anyone else I missed? I'm sorry.
Thank you. I'm glad you think they look great. They're fun to paint. A little intimidating at first because there are so many muscles, uh, but also pretty fun. I also really enjoy doing like little spot highlights like this. So sometimes I think maybe I need to be careful not to do too many of them too. You don't want to lessen the impact of them. And if you follow my stream, you, you know I like to do little spotted ones a lot of the time like a few dots, suggesting some sort of texture, perhaps. Tyrants are swole like that. Yes, very strong tyrant. Who told you it was a tyrant? Top secret stuff. Swole runt. <laughs> Yeah. Mm, okay, okay. So let's paint some loincloth. Loincloths are very good to have because they make things less nightmarish. You don't want to know what nightmares. Nightmarish genitals look like so yeah I'm gonna start off by painting the loincloth and the chains they can they can join too uh, with a dark brown color it's basically rhinoxide mixed with black and some purple underneath that on the palette because why not use that paint? I wanted it less saturated. So I could have just used like bright bark or color like that, but now I'm using the color, the paints that are already on my palette and on my table. I forgot to bring out the dried bark, or I changed my mind on the loincloth color. Which one? You'll never know. And these chains, I'm thinking maybe I'll make them rusty because that's nightmarish and, st and stuff. And fun, 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 fun times, maybe. Mad Meg turning to dog born. If Kim's MIA will sort it soon. 
All right, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I don't know if you can hear the drums, but I think I think there's a party going on outside. Like I, I was almost jumped a little the other night because um, I heard a few loud bangs. I was like, shit, is that gunshots? But then the loud bangs turned into a drum solo. And I was like, I think maybe they're like oil drums. Very explosive drums in the deep. <laughs> Yeah. That's okay, Kim. If you can't find it, I can probably scrounge shit up later as well. Paint's not dried yet, so we'll uh, we'll just do some messy blending. Woo! Messy blending. Messy wet blending. Do, 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 do. I try to worry less and less about doing everything super clean and uh, perfect, like. Oh, do shut up, dryer, please. I want to enjoy the painting process, and I want to sell a paint job. I want the paint job to look cool and impressive, but I'm trying to get away from, like, uh, having to feel like everything needs to be Amazing. To clarify, I'm saying shut up to my uh, dryer, not to anyone else. Playing around a little bit, seeing if I can find anything nice messing around. Uh, I think maybe this is when I take a little break uh, to calm down the dryer and feed the kitty cat and uh, grab a tiny snack maybe. So I'll see you very shortly and we'll finish up the loincloth and do the chains. And then we'll try and do some cool glow.
It's me. I'm back from the break and I apparently brought a fly friend. So there might be a cat trying to kill it here soon, which might result in chaos, but probably not too bad. Probably not too bad. Mm. Okay, so loincloth. We were painting loincloths. Cat is now in here trying to kill. She's made one attempt. Unsuccessful. But I think the fly gets the hint. So let's we'll see what happens. Uh, loin cloth, loin cloth. Painting a grayish brown loin cloth. Might throw in some warm tones. We'll see. Uh, I wouldn't mind making it <clears throat> contrast just a little bit with the cold tones of nightmares, nightmarish skin trademark. Yeah, is it in? But I don't want it to still focus. Uh, we can't have a loincloth dealer show. So, like, I would suggest painting the loincloth in a less saturated color than the skin. If I would paint it, like, uh, a bright, strong, vibrant color, then... Uh, I would risk drawing all the attention to, well, a loin cloth, and that's not what I want to do. That being said, it doesn't hurt to give it a little bit of color. We want to. Hi, kitty. Happy birthday, kitty cat.
Why doesn't Jompy wear pants? Does it prefer loincloths? Or are they just scarier? Do loincloths give more nightmares? Or terror? Hard to find a tailor in the Nightmare Realms. Oh, fair. <laughs> I just thought maybe he could just conjure up his own, but maybe not. I don't know. Because he can shape change, but maybe clothes are difficult. Or maybe Loincloth and chains are just like in fashion. A lot of Neverborn seem to like to dress light. Nice and breezy. <laughs> yes. And to be fair, like they shape change and they adapt to generally to or often to seem more scary to humans. And I guess the barbaric um, is often scary to the civilized so it might be a um, explanation too Just gonna dab in a little bit of like some warmer browns in some areas. For a little bit of variation. And I think we're gonna like overbrush the chains in a rusty brown. Rusty chains are cool and very scary. Everyone knows that.
Well, I know a lady almost walked in front of a tram a few winters ago because she was so shocked that I walked outside in shorts. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad she was all right. <laughs> yeah, you do tend to be, or tend to be, you're, you're pretty warm-blooded. Uh, my feet are very easily cold. <laughs> like, I, I feel warm, but I'm barefoot. Which is probably good, could it help? Because it helps cool me down. But right now, but uh, my feet feel a little cold. <laughs> I have this strange thing where I often don't like being barefoot. I don't know why. Context, uh, in Sweden, we do not wear shoes indoors. Um, so we're not barbarians. Maybe you are. Maybe we are. Uh, almost sounded like I said, maybe you are, but I meant to say maybe we are. Forged in the cold north. <laughs> yeah. My, my, my great uh, grandma well, one of them is actually from from up north. Didn't seem to help me though. Maybe because it's just an eighth of me. And maybe some warmer orange. Yeah, whenever you see like Kratos or some sort of action here, just walking around up north and too little clothing, you're you're like, uh, holy shit! Why doesn't he wear more clothing? It's freezing up there. I I could just think of you, Dogborn, because you are a reminder that some people uh, seem to be some sort of walking sons you just stay warm no matter what um Two pieces in a pot, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you play God of War? 
love in God of War 2018 where he, his son says, you're on fire. And he's like, it'll pass. That's the best, the best one. <laughs> <laughs> okay this is perhaps getting a little too intense i think maybe i'll wash it with a little bit of purple bring it down down watch some playthroughs we love boulder's tattoos yeah they're nice Really nice. So it's strange they, they they change things up a bit. Like Baller is not the son of Freya. But whatever. Doesn't matter. Every god fucks every god or something. I think. So it doesn't matter. At least in Greek mythology. And Norse mythology is not too different from Greek mythology. In my humble opinion, I hope I didn't tread on any toes there. Hi, under construction paints. What's what's happening? What's under construction? How are you doing? Uh, okay, I'm washing the chains with some purple wash. I find that can give a little bit of a richness to to rust. Can also just put some in shadows here maybe. We're also going to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. shake this ball of Agrax Earthshade a lot. Under construction is doing okay-ish. Summer depression means my painting desk is probably going to look like that until it gets cold again. Oh. I'm sorry to hear. Um, seasonal depression is a bitch. Hope you're feeling better soon. Is there anything uh, that can help? Yeah, thanks a lot. It was nice having you on the stream. Had a great time talking. Uh, Take care, Dogborn. Thank you. And good luck with food making to you. See ya. Did you get a new lamp? Uh, no. No, it did not. Actually. Is the light different? Okay. So we washed the lower outer parts of horns and I think we're gonna do it again actually gonna do a little bit of uh, purple washed in chompy's mouth as well don't remember it being a frame so much um no uh see you uh the camera is higher up than usual which helps me 
Um, uh, so, so like I've got it. Uh, I got the camera higher up, which helps me uh, sit a little bit better uh, whilst painting. Uh, it does have the consequence of me being like a little up and down with the depth, but I, I want to save my shoulders a little bit. Um, but that also means that, uh, yeah, part, in part because Chompy is big, but also in part because my shoulders, I, I, I have, I often have a lot of pain or a lot of pain to a little bit of pain. Uh, my shoulders and if I sit like this and that's horrible so and it's it's harder to when I'm streaming to to have a good posture uh, because of the camera setup but uh so that's why I adjusted things a little bit. Uh, Trump is indeed a big boy though. So I am going to bring out Use some magenta. And a little bit of purple wash. And I'm gonna thin it down. And I'm going to start gently Dabbing on some purple glazing, which I want to add a little bit at a time from this direction, like from here. Do you have a lot of Lord and Chomp Lord Champagne versions? Uh, I have three. And I think there are four. No, actually, there are sort of five because there's also the avatar. Um, I have the original metal one. I have the Chompy, the Nightmare Chompy. I can actually show it off to you. Uh, and I, I do not have the avatar. And I do not have the latest uh, Chunky Chompy. Uh, the very uh, the one with the very big mouth, a cool mouth that goes from uh, like across his whole torso up into his where a normal mouth would be. Chunky Chompy's Pizza and Child Casino. <laughs> uh, see, this Chompy is unrecorded black though. So it might not show up super well on camera. Uh, but, uh, 
This is the Nightmare Chompy with Dreamer on his shoulder. And you can see they're quite similar. It's just that the Nightmare Chompy has Dreamer on his shoulder. And uh, this one's a little smoother and has more 3D arms and hands due to this being a, a metal model. This one has a, a tummy mouth, though. So they're, they're a little different, but somewhat similar. And I love them both. Uh, the metal one is slightly larger, but not by much. It was also horribly difficult to build. <laughs> Um, um, there was a lot of gap filling involved. This new one was easier to build, much easier. So, I mean, Spiredyne wanted magenta, so now we're like we we didn't paint Chompy magenta, but we are now going to do what will hopefully be a cool magenta glow. I don't want any pulling there or there. You can, of course, do this with an airbrush, which helps in a lot of ways. But in some ways, um, using a brush gives you more control. In part, I guess that depends on how much of an airbrush brush wizard you are. But in my experience, again, a little bit more extra control doing this with a brush. A consequence, uh, a negative, is that it's harder to avoid um, these edges at the outermost parts of your paint application. But it uh, can be dealt with. So we're trying to do like uh, under highlights or whatever the term is, I forget, um, from this specific direction. Also, that brown wash dried, so we can add one more layer and leave a bit of 
the one wash uh, area of the horns free from wash. So I, I will slowly build, I'm, I'm not an OSL expert, but I will slowly, try and slowly build up these uh, little purple or magenta highlights. And then I will go in and do a uh, sharper, Um, magenta highlight mixed with a bit of white or a cool light gray later, I think. Of course, we we're also going to do a bit of an orange glow around the eyes. Still kind of sounds like kids are killing each other out there, but I think they're playing. Sorry if that was too dark. Uh, just sounds, yeah. Hi, Spiredine. 
Gremlins would consider killing each other. Play. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Barry says, I think I'm going to do my return on as white skin with red shading. You know, I think that sounds like a great idea. Sounds real cool. Those returned. I saw that picture of uh, Castore. They look really menacing. Really cool. Very, very cool stuff. So dab in a little bit of magenta on the tongue to give it a little bit more color. Ah! Jumpy fell. So uh, the returned, are they, uh, what was the return going to be? Um, what was this title going to be released with? with theory all right right that uh strange contraption as an enforcer theory is cool she seems, damn, every, all of the new stuff seems really fun to play. And I've only tried Harold Toll. He's fun to play with. Less against, I've heard.
Ah, dropped them again. <laughs> okay, so I'm now going to do some extra highlighting. Really accentuating his uh impressive physique. Uh, and a little bit more.
Uh, that didn't turn out too good. Right there. So if we line in these uh, muscles with black in places where it makes sense to do so, they will pop a little bit even more, making those muscles pop. Poof. Uh, it's probably not healthy. Okay, so I think maybe I'm ready to do a little bit of, um, oh, well, a little bit of highlighting of Well, God, I'm not finding the right word. Orange glow. I got there in the end. Woo! Just gonna... There we go.
might actually do this very carefully. Because I, I guess I kind of run the risk of losing a little bit of this. Uh, contrast we got going on with the orange eyes against cold skin. I'll try and do a little bit of subtle glow maybe. Explore it a bit. Big muscle boy says crimson tan. Yes, indeed. So if it glows, those eyes would probably lay this part up, right? So this part should be orangey. How are you doing, Crimson Tan? Is it supposed to be Crimson Tan or Crimson Crimson Tan? Crimson Tan? Crimson, crimson Tan? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll stop butchering your nickname now. Crimson Tan. Okay, cool. Go easy with the sun, okay? Doing good, kills and dying before a doctor appointment. Does it have anything to do with a crimson tan? No, uh, I'm not for real trying to ask you what your doctor appointment is. But I hope everything goes well and uh, you are very welcome to kill some time here with us. Um, <laughs> uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I've seen you in the channel before, Crimson Time. Or am I just forgetful and rude? I'm glad you're doing well. Before it's been a long time. Okay, that is totally fine. Um, so, do you play Malifo? A little, not well though. Well, having fun is the important bit. <laughs> what do you play?
Pressers. Molly's my girl. I love Molly. She is awesome. Long time since I played her because I played her a lot during the beginning of third edition. But I love her, love the crew, love the aesthetics, love the theme, the story, the models. A lot of fun. I faction up way too much. But that's fun, so maybe that's okay. Okay, so we're gonna stop dabbing around this soon and trying to uh, paint some less um, watered down paint so we can put some uh, orange in places we're not gonna be able to reach with such watered down paint. Faction up and gets you familiar with more of the game. Yeah, fair, for sure. Uh, different ways of uh, improving, I guess. It's sort of lateral improving in a way, maybe. Uh, or horizontal. I might be getting them mixed up. I know what horizontal is. I think maybe I used the word lateral. Incorrectly. Lateral, no, I, th yeah, I think maybe. Hmm. Sideways. Those are my socials. That means that we don't have a lot of time left on the stream. But Chompy is looking pretty good. I think. It's almost ready for chomping. You like what it did with orange? Thank you. That's nice to hear. And ugh, I was trying to sit more upright. And I just keep falling down. Yeah, I was a little worried there for a while that the horns would look bad in like a traditional horn color, sort of. Uh, but I think it worked pretty well. It worked out in the end. Lateral, horizontal, six of one, half a dozen of the other. <laughs> yeah, some, something like that. Just gonna uh, do a little bit of an orange mixed with a tiny bit of cocky highlight to the lower eyelids. And a little bit of orange mixed with a tiny bit of bluish gray here. Just more orange.
nice feeling when a paint job kind of starts getting pulled together. There are a bunch of rough edges for sure. Could do with some touch-ups. But how much we do depends on time and energy and yeah, what we feel like is necessary. Like uh, it's very easy to end up in a uh, spot where you never feel like anything is complete. And I'm trying to get away from a mindset that everything needs to be perfect. I want to have a mindset that everything is supposed to be impressive. And if I push myself, then that's great. Sometimes I shouldn't have to push myself, but I often like to push myself to improve. But I think it takes away some of the fun of painting for me if I feel like everything needs to be perfect in a miniature. So I'm going to try and I try to be happy with miniatures even though they are not perfect. Painted this over the course of nine hours of a stream. And I think the result is pretty good considering the time. Uh, uh, for such a big model. I'm sure that when I take a picture of it, I'll see some things that I'm going to be like, ah, no, I need to fix that. And I'm probably going to allow myself to do a pause or two of uh, correcting the most jarring mistakes, but not too many. You have to move on. Um, if you don't want to be stuck on one miniature. And uh, you can always try and improve on the next one. I'm curious to see if uh, well, wh what other people's approaches are for that? Um, yes, it's a hard mindset to get out of for sure. I'm glad you think so. I I, I think the camera uh, probably smooths it out a little bit, but yeah, I think he probably looks pretty good. After this little glow glow up, uh, might want to have to might have to go into some areas and push some black into the those shadows again, but that's not going to be fun to watch anyway, so it is not a big deal to skip that step on the stream. I think the, those areas should be hit orange. And we should probably have a little bit of red up here from these two hashtag normal eyes. All Neverborn eyes are normal. Maybe to be body positive here.
Anyway, this is Chompy, and this is me, and it's been a lovely weird time. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me. I hope you like this Chompy. I'll do some touch-ups, and uh, before or after that, I'll probably put a picture on a weird place, either like after touch-ups or I will post it and say there are going to be a few touch-ups, but here's what it looks like now. Um, yeah, I think that purple glow turned out pretty cool. It's a bit of an oily look, which I really like. Perhaps slightly reminiscent of a uh, a certain no um, uh, there this is a really cool, really good painter I'm nowhere near her skill but and I just realized I might put her name but Kat, Katarina Gorska maybe um, she does some a lot of work with oily colors like not oil colors, but oily hues, which I really like. Anyway, enough rambling. Uh, go check her out if you can spell it with my butchering of her name. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for hanging out with me. <laughs> Stay weird and take care of each other. Bye-bye.